let's configure CCC. As you remember, I already installed it, so we're going to navigate to the install directory. We'll see all the different uh, components of the software. If you ever need to uninstall it when you're doing an upgrade, this is where it is. It's installed actually and called using the Luna Director user for reference if you're troubleshooting the product. We want to use the configuration script. So let's run it as root and run through the wizard. So we'll check the requirements again, UMass value. Uh, it will pull down the Java home path and it's going to ask us do we want to change it. We do not. It'll check as well for the JCProv uh, wrapper if it's actually installed from before. Firewall, very important. Do you want to open up the port what CC communicates with over uh, 8181? Yes. And as you can see in my test environment, I kind of cheated and killed uh, and stopped IP tables and firewall demons. So didn't have to do it. But most common problem a lot of people have is they think they set up everything and it turns out the firewall is blocking communication host file for local configuration step eight is configuring ssl service certificates okay and this is service certificates uh, for ccc very important step do you want to set an ip address in the subject alternative name of the certificate and it's up to you if you want to do that uh, it's important and i'll mention it because if we do not put an ip address here it was going to use the host value of the distinguished name uh, that's going to be used for a CCC client jar registration. So what does that mean before we even got into all of that? When you have to register a client, it's going to pull down this cert, not just when you log into the web interface, because they connect over the same method. That means that when you're actually going to run that client registration, if you misconfigured this subject alternative name or you put in a misconfigured uh, fully qualified domain name under the other values you won't be actually to connect there'll be a mismatch so make sure in your own environment whatever you are setting that this stays consistent or else you'll get to that last step of deploying a client and you'll have issues so i'll put the ip address for my environment as you can see here you must create a distinguished name which in my case i am going to use the same one but make sure that whatever it is it's accurate And if you don't remember all this, that's okay. You can watch the videos again later on when you're configuring on your own. Alrighty. Configuring key stores. We're going to have to set up several passwords uh, for the key store and change the defaults uh, for the first time. So let's set up a key store password. And by key store, I mean the Java key store. And this actually is holding the service certificate and the private key. So whenever a client will connect, it's going to send that certificate stored within this key store, right, for verification. So we're going to have to remember some of these passwords, especially if you're doing maintenance later on. You see it's going to make a master key for a vault and a salt for all the passwords. Then there's the default password. It's going to ask you here. change it to access the vault there's a separate password so we'll have to also configure that and this vault is holding the trust store and key store password so there's several things that we are doing you'll be like wait there's a vault that's holding a key store and a trust store and you know what is doing what and where uh, and there's lots of different components so it does get confusing if you're just creating more and more. So now we're at the trust store and that's actually used to hold the Postgres or Oracle SSL certificates. So we're gonna have to set a password for that too. And if you're not remembering what I'm saying, by the way, it's also in the documentation. And some of this is, you know, things from Java and how a key store works is not unique to CCC. So if you have any confusion, you can always look that up. All right, so once again, before I continue to configure the database, 
we change the key store password, a uh, vault password, and as well, we had a trust store password that we had to configure. So remember that said one thing like the trust store, the one part of it is holding the database certificates. Another one is holding uh, all the secrets that are used uh, by our key cloak service, as well as uh, the CC certificate, most importantly. So remember that we need to have access to all of them. So remember whatever those passwords are for your environment, probably notate that. So we're going to use Postgres. What is the IP address? It's not a remote host. I'm going to configure it locally, as we did in the last step. We will configure SSO for security and the default port 5432. Remember that database password? We'll have to put that in now. And remember the trust store password that's going to be used to access the certificate and private key that's used. Let's look at the information that we created before. Validate that it is correct. And we are going to trust it and store it into our trusted key store. All right. Now we have to have an additional password that's added to the vault. So for a vault to access it, we need its password as well. What it's doing there is importing the database certificate into the trust store. After that's done, it's going to set up our authentication subsystem that we use using uh, Keycloak for identity access management. So it's a one-time operation to initialize uh, the process, then it's also going to initialize uh, license information and how it manages licenses when you install it. So that will take, usually for the first couple of times, several minutes. And I will pause the video for now and get back to you once we're done. So there we go. We installed CCC successfully, keyword here. Uh, we didn't have any uh, issues, and I think from 3.6 and on, from my experience, now we're in 3.7, things are much smoother, and generally for a first-time install, it's not that big of a deal. If you're using the external database, that's usually where the uh, you throw the wrench into all your plans on how you're configuring things, and you require the DBA on his end to get his act together uh, to make sure everything's working. But in general, if you're installing the Postgres database, you can just next next through everything and not even understand what you're doing uh, and you can probably still get it installed if you want to check under system ctl let's check the status of the service that's running so you always see that's a service called cc that you can check and how it's running if you also noticed that there's a log of everything so if you did indeed have issues we can always jump to the log and do a tail of server dialog that's kind of where you're going to see everything and what's happening if it's indeed connected or not or having any issues so that's where we're at right now the next video we're going to finally log into the web ui as the admin for the very first time and then activate our root of trust